They are coming. We've heard those haunting words for over a year now. And on the 4th of February, 2022, they will arrive. Siege of the Atlas will bring further changes to the Atlas progression system, a new challenge league, new endgame bosses, and much, much more. There have been a lot of spoilers released so far, and today I'm going to be talking about the ones we've seen. I'll be going into a little bit of speculation on what things mean, talk about practical applications for divination cards and items that we've already seen, and finally talk about the implications for one of the most powerful items in Path of Exile. But a little bit more on that later. Let's start by going through the spoilers in order of release. First up, we have a new divination card, which, if you'll pardon my terrible French accent, bijou, based on a word of French origin meaning jewels. For lore nerds, this card also brings confirmation that that voice in your head is in fact Tang Mazu. But I know most people don't watch my videos for my terrible French, obscure etymology, or POE lore. So let's get into some of the more practical applications. Item level 84 cluster jewels are especially important because that's the minimum level required to roll the prefix, 35% increased effect of small passive skills. This is often desirable on 12 passive larges, 6 passive mediums, or 3 passive smalls. And in the past, some of the most valuable mirror tier cluster jewels did rely on this mod to get most of their value. Clusters like this are especially popular for builds where the small passives can give a disproportionate amount of value when compared to the notables, things like minion builds, stat stackers, along with a few damage over time and archmage builds. So where might this drop? Well, this is going to be pure speculation based on the name, but I'm going to guess it's tied to jewelry rewards or jewelry boxes, things like Alva's Glittering Halls, Legion rewards, or maybe even chests in Expedition, Heist, or Delve. So what are some of my thoughts on the overall impact of this divination card? Is it going to be easier to get clusters if you're in solo cell found? Are we going to see a bunch of price drops? Well, most likely no and no. This card specifically says item level 84. That means it's probably going to be fairly rare. This isn't about getting any old cluster jewel. This is about getting an endgame item, something powerful, rare, and valuable. As a result, I'm not sure that most players will even see a full set in their entire League of Playtime which means it's not going to have a big impact on the Cluster Jewel market as a whole. I also don't expect it to have a big impact on the 12 passive larges that are often used in meta builds. Especially when they're well rolled, those are going to stay expensive, because most of the time, the greatest expense isn't in getting the base jewel, it's in rolling the jewel. The base jewel might cost you one or two exalts, you'll then spend 20 to 70 exalts to roll it, and then it'll be worth 80, 100, or even a mirror. Where this could have a big effect, is in mediums and smalls, or even item level 84 large clusters for builds that aren't considered popular within the meta. Generally speaking, divination cards have a disproportionate impact on off-meta items, because when an item is in demand, very often the supply doesn't change by enough to shift the margins by that much. Next up, we have another divination card, Justified Ambition. Venarius is a prime example of a phrase, the end justifies the means. His goal was to stop the Elder and save Rayclast at all costs. And while the goal might have been noble, the means were abhorrent, and the use of those abhorrent means cost him everything. Justified Ambition can be turned in for one of the five synthesis maps, Cortex, which is known for dropping Bottled Faith and Garb of the Ephemeral, along with the four regular ones, the Augmented, Rewritten, Altered, and Twisted Distant Memories, where you fight various synthetic golems created by Venarius in hopes of obtaining a good three implicit synthesized rare, or maybe a good circle ring. Now, I can't help but feel like this card is going to drop from a boss. This is because synthesis maps are generally valuable, they're generally considered part of the endgame, and they have very limited means of acquisition currently. The rarity of the card is probably going to depend on whether or not it's weighted. If you have a 20% chance to get a Cortex, that's going to mean the card is effectively 1 25th of a Cortex, and it's going to accordingly be very rare. On the other hand, maybe you only have a 1% chance of getting Cortex, then I could see it being significantly more common. Currently, you obtain synthesis maps as boss drops based on your awakening level, or they're sometimes available for purchase from Xana, and sometimes available from her missions. This might add an additional avenue for people looking to target farm synthesis, or people looking to complete the feared and the forgotten. Earlier I said that it might drop off of a boss, if I had to guess, maybe it'll drop off of one of the new Guardian equivalents that are replacing the Conquerors. If you have a guess, let me know down in the comments. Okay, okay, enough speculation about divination cards, as they're not too exciting and most people won't see them outside of stacked deck gambles anyway. It's time to talk about Melding of the Flesh, a new jewel that you'll be able to use in 317, that is quite possibly a drop from a new tentacle monstrosity sieging the Atlas. I expect the jewel to have a roll range for the negative resistances, something like negative 70 to negative 80, 
or maybe if we're lucky, something like negative 50 to negative 80. In addition, melding of a flesh causes your maximum elemental resistances to be limited by your highest single maximum elemental resistance. This is a fancy way of saying if you have 90% max fire res, you effectively have 90% max fire, cold, and lightning res. Normally it takes about 405% total elemental resistances, you can kind of think of this as 10 suffixes, to reach res cap. The jewel adds another 210%, or again, think of this as 5 suffixes for a total of 15. So you would need high tier resistances on roughly 5 of your items, assuming all 3 suffixes are resistances, to reach 75, 75, 75 with the jewel. This is of course speculation, and you'll need a little bit to go beyond that, but having 90% all elemental resistance means 60% less damage taken from elemental damage as compared to 75%. So this item is very powerful, but it's not without cost. Or is it? What if that res penalty was actually turned into a bonus? That's right, melting of a flesh is going to make it easier for you to scale Doriani's prototype, because it makes it easier to reach negative 200% lightning resistance. You'll need more res than you typically would on a Doriani's build to make up for the fire and cold you lose, but that's still not that much more than a normal build, since you're now only dealing with two penalties rather than three, and you don't have to get any lightning res on gear. This could also offer additional defensive benefits if you're using something like an Aegis Aurora, which gives you 5% max cold, or a Rise of a Phoenix, which gives you max fire. The other thing that comes to mind, of course, is Mage Blood, one of the ultimate items that were added as a chase unique during Scourge League. If you combine three elemental flasks with a res suffix, you get around 175% to all elemental resistances. This goes a large way to wiping out the total requirements. With a couple res rolls, you'll easily be able to cap yourself at 90% maximum fire, cold, and lightning, which again is 60% less elemental damage taken as compared to 75%. Because you're using the elemental flasks with a mage blood, you get an additional 40% less elemental damage taken. These combine multiplicatively for effectively 76% less elemental damage taken, as opposed to just using 75% all res. With that level of damage reduction, you're going to be able to sit in even the most dangerous elemental effects in Path of Exile. I don't think this is going to be for everyone, but if your goal is to break the game, this is one to keep an eye on. Now, I don't think it's a contentious statement to say that the map tab is one of the greatest quality of life additions to PoE. In fact, I'd put it as a close second behind tab affinities. Back in the day, you'd fill tabs of your maps, then search through three tabs of red maps to find those strands that you rolled and then lost. If you've been feeling a little lost while looking at all the spoilers, and if you found this video helpful, be sure to leave a like. And if you want to see more info on Siege of the Atlas, sub to the channel and ring the bell to be notified whenever I upload. You can support this channel more directly over on my Patreon, but more about that in a bit. For now, let's get back to talking about lost maps. Personally, when I lose a map, I always figure they go to hang out with all my socks that disappear in the wash. The map tab has a new section for guardian maps, including the four new Cirrus guardians, which are the Conquerors. This confirms that Cirrus himself will no longer be the main focal boss in Siege of the Atlas. This also means it's going to be far easier to buy and sell Cirrus due to him being itemized. We'll probably see an increase in cost for the gems and items dropped, because a lot of players will choose to skip Cirrus entirely, and a few will choose to farm it as their dedicated means of sustaining their currency. This also means if you want to practice Cirrus, it's going to be easier than ever, because you can buy six sets and slam them till you get good. The most exciting part of this change, though, is you're not losing your Elder Maps anymore. If you've ever clicked an Elder Map into your Map tab, went about sorting, only to realize that, in fact, you made a mistake? Now, they'll go to their own sub-tab, sorted by Guardian type. This is a buff! I've lost count of a number of times I've clicked an Elder Guardian Map into my tab, and then finished sorting, and noticed only when my inventory was empty, so I'm very happy to see this change added. This also implies that the Eldritch Horror we saw in the teaser trailer is, in fact, the new Atlas boss and most likely we'll have four new guardians, four new influence types, and a big bad who's hopefully better designed than Cirrus. This could also impact how watchstones work, how you progress your atlas, or how you progress your maven passives. It'll be interesting to see what Siege brings in that regard. Now, I'm not one to make a 10 minute video speculating on 20 seconds of content, but I would be remiss if I didn't talk about Arch Nemesis League. So here's the teaser trailer that GGG released yesterday. Normally, major Atlas expansions are paired with a relatively simple league. In 3.9, we saw Metamorph, which was basically just a second map boss. In 3.13, we saw Ritual, 
which was a slightly different take on every other circle mechanic in Path of Exile. 317 brings Arch Nemesis. Does this mean that Nemesis rares are getting reworked? I wouldn't be shocked if this means that every Nemesis mod is going to become some sort of volatile, making Arch Nemesis Peely's take on Bullet Hells. However, if I was to think about how a Nemesis system works in other games, this usually means an enemy that you fight that gets stronger when you kill it or gets stronger when it kills you. Now, an enemy that gets stronger when it kills you doesn't make all that much sense in Path of Exile, so I'd guess this is going to be an enemy that gets stronger when you kill it. Maybe we'll see Nemesis rares that are far stronger, and you kill them over and over again over the course of several maps. This gives it more abilities, increased health, and increased damage. You then fight an ultimate version, which is basically a boss fight, and everything resets. It'd be cool to see more dangerous and powerful bosses in our maps, as the map boss is usually little more than a minor annoyance. This could also mean upgrades or reworks to Nemesis items. Now, Nemesis uniques are, for the most part, in a pretty good spot. Blood of a Kauri and Laviandra's Spirit tend to see decent amounts of use. Beric's Respite is quite popular as a way to proliferate shock or ignite, and Beric's Grip is one of the few ways to add generic life leech to your spells. Beric's Pass, on the other hand, is far more lackluster, and I could absolutely see it getting a rework. The Taming is supposed to be the ultimate ring, made by fusing all three Beric's rings, it's not commonly used anymore, because many builds that focus on ailments tend to inflict alt ailments or don't use attacks, so they don't interact very well with the taming. And then, of course, there's one nemesis item to rule them all, the Headhunter. For a long time, that was Path of Exile's ultimate item. Throughout its history, it's been one of the most contentious and one of the most popular. Will we see Headhunter buffs that put it on par with Mageblood for more builds? Will we see a new nemesis NPC who's named the Head Headhunter from a long lost clan? Or maybe the Headhunter Hunters will finally be able to claim a new prize. Chris has been a long time defender of the item, and many players live for it. So, while I don't think the Headhunter needs buffs, I did feel it was worth mentioning. But what do you think? Are you looking forward to Siege of the Atlas? Do you think you'll complete a set of a new divination cards? Maybe you're planning to build around Melding of the Flesh. Or you're simply happy that you're no longer going to lose those Elder Maps when you click them into your tab. Will Arch Nemesis League bring a rework of a Nemesis mechanic, or is it simply the name of the biggest metal band of 2022? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and again, a special thanks to my patrons and YouTube channel members. If you want to support me, you can do so by clicking the links down in the description below or on screen right now. You can also support by making purchases through my Nexus page. Or if you just want to chill and hang out, be sure to join the Discord. Again, links for everything are down in the description below. Thank you, and have a great day.